So hi everyone, I'm really pleased to be here today. Um, and so I'm gonna uh, first introduce myself since I don't think any one of you knows me here. Um, so I'm Clemence, I'm 24 and uh, I just uh, graduated from school uh, and started my second company, Smart Friend. So I'm gonna start a bit with my story and then, then uh, yeah. So that's me when I was young. I was what we can call a no life, meaning that I was not very comfortable with the, you know, with the world I was living in. I was, I didn't have that many friends, and I was only sharing my life with my dolls that were like my babies, and uh, and I had only school for like for real life, and uh, and I was so crazy about it that I would make my mom wake up at 6 a.m. just to make sure that I would know all the all the chapters in the textbook, so when the teacher would make a study that, I would be ready for this. Um, and, and so, and then, um, but, but at this time, I had a dream. And my dream was to be a cashier. What simple, that, right? Uh, because I found it so amazing, the way that from one side, it was like somebody else product and then the other side the other side of the cashier it was yours and I was like my god this is impressive so I wanted to become a cashier and so my my parents got me got me a, a, a cash receiver so I was so happy I was like oh my god I have my dream in front of me so what could I do to use it and to live my dream so I decided to sell my old books that I was not using anymore and so I started to sell my books to my, to my friends, my family. And, uh, and so I was really happy because I was acting actively to live my dream. And, uh, and I think that's when I started to become an entrepreneur because I think that being an entrepreneur is really living your dream and, and, and implement everything to, to, to make it possible, right? Uh, and, and then I became a teenager. Uh, and so, teenager means rebel too, right? So I became a rebel. I was not happy with anything. I was becoming extrovert about it. And, um, but especially, I was not happy with the French school system. Because in the French school system, you just have to sit down in the classroom and listen to the teacher. You don't have anything to say because since you're young, you don't know anything. And, uh, and I, I think, <laughs> thank you. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, and so I, I became to start being interested in the US and especially in the American school system. Um, and I became interested in the US because, you know, all the movies, all the series, uh, all the music. So, so I decided to go and see. And uh, so I went to the US. And when I arrived there, I just turned. 18 and so I arrived there with the eyes you know of a French girl going to the US and um, but when I arrived in San Francisco first I was amazed by this state of mind but by the American state of mind with people that were all different and 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 they were all really proactive they, they would find problems in their life and and they would be so enthusiastic about it because they would say if there is a problem then there is a solution so i will create this solution and i was like oh my god that's great and um and so i really i really felt in love with this culture and i really embraced it so when i come back in france at the age of 19 i decided to create my first company which is mobi so I, I was really young at that time and um and I found it with my ex-boyfriend, who was my boyfriend at the time. Uh, and we decided to import the US concept of renting furniture to students. Uh, 
So you know that the, the student would find his or her place unfurnished and we would rent him the furniture so he doesn't have to buy. When he moves out, he doesn't have, you know, to, to sell his stuff, blah, 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 all, all the things we all knew one day. And, uh, and that worked pretty well. But, uh, and, and so I made my first step as an entrepreneur in April 2011. And I was so crazy about it. All my, since that day, all my energy would be on this, on this company. And, um, and yeah, I was, I was living only for this. And that, that was an awesome first experience that made me learn a lot. Uh, first, I would say that starting a company can be dangerous for your mental health and that you have to leave it with moderation. Because, because so when, you know, we, we broke up at one point, my ex-boyfriend and I, and, um, and since no one would want to sell his shares, then we had to close the company. And that day, I felt so destroyed because, because I failed. And, and I know that people say that, you know, failure is good because it forces you to learn and, and, and to, to look backwards, asking what went wrong so you can do better the next time. But when you leave the failure, it's horrible. It, 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 it feels like you're dying, you know, that, that's crazy. And so that's why I'm saying this, that's a lot of entrepreneurs do this mistake of leaving living for your company instead of living, you know, like, and make, make your company doing good. Um, and so I think you, an entrepreneur really needs to understand that this is a different entity and that if, if it fails, that's fine. Um, and, and secondly, starting a company is all about people. It's not only about the product you're creating or, or the service you're providing, it's, it's really a human adventure. And, uh, and that's why you really need to find the right person to do this. Because it's only the people who will make it a success or not. Um, and talking about, about you know, starting your company with the right person, the first thing is to find someone that is complementary with you. You know, you have complementarities. Um, and so what best than a tech guy and a business guy, you know, because everything today is about internet, the web, blah, blah, blah. So, but, but why business and tech guys have so much troubles matching? That's crazy. That, that I think that's the harder thing I would, I would, I, I remember one day I met with, a, with, with an app developer and, uh, and he was telling me about his great app he's just made, that, that he had more than a thousand unique users per month. And I was like, oh my God, that's great, that's impressive. If, if I had more than a unique thousand customers per month, I would be rich by now. So congrats, you, you're finally living on, on your dream, that's great. And he looked at me and I looked at him and he told me, no, I'm not, I, I just made it for fun. I don't make any money out of it. And I was like, what the hell? You're just telling me that you created something that people use, that is useful for, for, for people, and you didn't even think about making some money out of it? And I was like, oh my God. I understand why tech guys and, and business guys have so much troubles matching because we don't see, we don't see the, the, the the system, you know, of, of starting something the same way. We, like, for, for, one, for, for one guy, it's just about creating something and uh, that people will use and that will be successful and that maybe why not make some money out of it. And for the other one, if you find a great idea, then you're like, okay, but wait, let's see the business model, let's see if I can make some money out of it, and then if yes, I'll do that. So, of course, the first one is the tech guy and the second one is the business guy.
No, I you, you can't? No? Yeah, that's fine. So, um, so yeah, so tech and business, guys. Um, and so, you know, that's like men and women, or like employer and employee. They all need each other, but they have so many differences that sometimes it can be so hard. But that's a shame because, because after all, we, we, we all want the same thing. We just want to, you know, to, to, to really live our dream and to really create something that will maybe change the world or at least be, be useful to people. So if someone wants to create something like a, like a dating between tech and business guy, then please do, because this is so hard. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so talking about entrepreneurship, what is it to be an entrepreneur? Um, a lot of people say that this is a state of mind, but I think that it, this is more a state of doing. Because you have a lot of people that talk about creating something, I have this great idea, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna change the world, but they never act for this. And this is really, you really have to take action. Um, and, and so, and, and there is this, this great saying uh, that is, comes from George Bernard Shaw. He says that there is two types of people. The one that sees things and ask why, and the one that dreams things that never were and ask why not. And I think the entrepreneurs are the ones who ask, why not? Let's do, let, let's do something. Th there is something missing. Let, let's create it. Um, so yeah, so it's 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 really a state, a, a real state of doing, and I don't think there is there is a real definition for an entrepreneur. There is not one type of people that we we can all be entrepreneurs. We you know, but maybe maybe entrepreneurs share some attributes. The the first one would be to be a Monday people. I I was at a startup day in Milan in. Um, back in May, and there was this guy who was doing a speech about the Monday and the Friday people. He told us that there was two types of people. The Monday people, so the one who on Sunday would be really excited because, because tomorrow it's Monday, so we're going back to work, and, and they love what they do, so they're really excited about that. And the Friday people that have the biggest smile on Friday because this is finally the weekend, you know, and we are finally done. And I think you, you be, besides entrepreneurs, I think everyone should ask himself or herself, because if you are a Friday people, then there is something wrong, because we live only once and we work more than a half, more than the half of our life. So you better love what you do. And this is so much better when when you do something with passion and, and, and when you, you love what you, do, what you do because because you think that somehow you're adding value to the life of people. Um, secondly, there, there, are, there are people who have dreams and, uh, and they are willing to fight to make it successful. So for that, <laughs> you need to leave your comfort zone. What does that mean? It means that you need to try to do things that, that you're afraid of, but because, because that's when you're going you're gonna to do the, the best you can do, you know, because you're going to fight for something. And, and, um, and you also need to be really optimistic. Like, as, as Winston Churchill said, an optimist sees the, the opportunity in every calamity, and a pessimist sees a calamity in every opportunity. And you know, the first part would be what, what I discovered in the US. Um, and really, entrepreneurs are like that. There, there are people who, who when, when you see something that's wrong, then you see something that could be better, so you, you see something that could be created. Um, and thirdly, but I think it's last but, but not least, and it's really important to be obstinate. Because we're talking about dreams here. Because, you know, entrepreneurship, you're always talking about follow your dreams. But this is not a dream every day. You have to fight to convince people that your thing 
is the new best thing ever. And, and, and you have to fight for that while having your own doubts because you have to have doubts too because that's how you're going to try to innovate again and try to do something even better by saying that, okay, maybe my product is great, but maybe I could make it even better if I, you know, there, there, there are always some ways to improve. Um, so really obstinate, I think that's, that's, that's one attribute that is, that is essential with, with all the three. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, so like, as, as I said, you, you need to take action about things. And, um, and as Steve Jobs used to say, I love citations because I think this is really inspiring. And he says, your time is limited, so don't waste it living the life of someone else. Don't waste it being a Friday people. Really love what you do. This is, this is the essence of life, I think. And uh, you really have to follow your heart because, because, of course, we live in a society that, that is all about dogmas, you know? You need to go to school to get your degree and then, and then to find a great job in, a, in an international company and then find someone, marry, and then have children. And then what? Then if you, if, if you don't love, if you're not... Oh, okay. Thank you. That's not working. It's not for me, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, because, f for example, I, I just I just graduated from from the American University in Paris, and um, and I'm I'm starting my my second company that I'm still trying to take it off the ground, uh, but I'm enjoying my life and I I really love what I do and I'm and I'm really happy. So so that's why I, I think you really should have the courage to listen to your heart and take action about it. And, and I think I'm done. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> mm, for the most brilliant questions, I have some SIM cards to give away and some boat trips around the river. So who wants to start? Uh, hi, my name is Michaela. Uh, I know that you won a, a competition, a startup weekend in Paris. Oh yeah. With uh, with your project or with your startup. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know how well you are doing right now. Oh, um, it it a, a lot of things happen since since startup weekend because startup weekend is is a great thing to do to test you know to test your ID, and uh, and when you win you have you first you you you. You're like, okay, well, I, I get something, you know, that, that's not something completely ridiculous. I can, I can make something out of it. Um, and, and you meet some people because you have to form a team. So you meet people with who you work during a whole weekend. Um, and so a lot of things happen. First, the, the company got, you know, officially created. Uh, and, and, and right now, I'm, uh, I'm really working on doing partnerships with, because First Smart Rent is the, the same thing as my first company, but so we rent furniture through packages of furniture with, with uh, appliances. And uh, because the thing in, in France, if you rent a furnished place, you have a lot of tax incentives. Uh, so for, for landlords, it's, it's better to rent furnished. And so, but you still have, you know, to buy the furniture and, uh, and to take care of it. So we do that for you. So we rent you the furniture and we take care of everything. And, uh, and that's doing good. I mean, I just started in June um, and I'm working, you know, on, on partnerships, on, on also developing different uh, types of furniture, more, more, you know, more comfortable, like more affordable. Um, and, and, and that's good. That's good. But it's you know it's it's long because you have to like meet people to 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 present your your new concept and when in and in France new concept means time because you need to educate people like okay right now you can do this and then you know to and so uh, but but yeah that that's good. Uh, and you mentioned that you are working with team right now uh, and also in your present you are you are having a team right now. 
no, 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 no. Now, ra- right now, it's me, it's me alone. But that's why I was talking about, I think, the importance of of sharing this adventure because because that's a great thing to do. But it's better when you share because entrepreneurship is really like a roller coaster. So one day you feel like you are the god, you know, you, you're the best, you're, you're the best one. And, and the other day you're like, oh my God, I will, I will never succeed. And so if you can share this with, with someone that is living the same thing, there is nothing better. But, but this is really hard to find, you know, the one who will share the same passion for your project and who will have the same vision of the business. But uh, so, so right now, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm alone. Yeah, and if you would have a team, let's say, in a few months, uh, then, for example, working with the guys, would you be still a leader, you would say? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's an interesting question. Um, you know what, that's, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, at, the, um, at the startup weekend, I had a team of seven people and there were six guys. Um, so that's true, that's difficult because, you know, the guys want to be the guys, you know, so they want to take the lead. But um, but at the same time, when, when, when this is your project, this is something, you know, better than anyone. So I think it's balanced. And, uh, and I think when you have a team, you have so much to do in a startup. So you have different roles. And, um, and yeah, I think that would be, yeah, I think that would be okay. Any more questions? Next question. Um, <clears throat> what's the thing to avoid and then what's the thing to ensure that happens when starting a business I'm, I'm sorry C- can you can you just repeat so if there's one thing to avoid okay. when starting a business yeah. what's that and if there's one thing to ensure that happens what's that oh uh, i i that's a good question because i remember that i forgot to mention this um you have to avoid to to try to have the best product to go on the market with the best product ever and say, say to yourself that you never will go to market until your thing is the best is, is the best you can do i think you need to the first thing to happen is to is to of course create something but then go to the market and test it to your audience because if you go to your customers with your product that is you know that is not perfect they will you will ask them questions and they will tell you what they want so so the the thing to avoid is to really take time on trying to build the product the best you can do i think you just have to you know create your product as as it is okay to, 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 to be functional. And then the first, the first thing to make is to test it. Because, because you know, it's, it's great to have a great idea and a great product, but if people don't use it, that's useless. So you really need to test it and, and, and to ask people if that's okay, if that can be useful for them, or like how it would be better, and, and they will really tell you. Because I, I'm gonna give you an example. When, when I first started, so my, my first company, it was directed to students. Our customers were the students. So the students were renting to us the furniture. And, um, and I was, you know, I was making some rendezvous with, the, with, the, with the real estate guys. And, and I was asking them, okay, so do you think it's, it's okay? Your customers are going to be happy with this service, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be helpful for them. And by asking questions, that's those real estate guys that know really well the market I was entering, uh, that told me that maybe it would be better to address directly to the landlords. Maybe it would be more, it would be more useful for them. And so wh- when you ask questions, when you go with your product, and, and you ask questions, that's, you know, that's how it, it really makes it better, I think. Okay, have we got any more questions? Hi, Hi. I'm, I'm Michael from Berlin, and you know Berlin is also a startup scene, like London. Uh, what is your strategy to go into the market or other markets? Like, you always want to stay in Paris uh, alone? Or? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so there must be strategy behind, I don't see Yeah, yeah, more. yeah. Yeah, of course. I I I, I want to go to Paris first to you know to test the market and because because in France this is really centralized. Um, so everything everything happens in Paris. And if you succeed in Paris, then then you will succeed in France. Um, 
so so yeah my, my strategy into is to enter first the Parisian market to test my product there and and then to expand it to other cities in France and um, and in Europe because it doesn't exist yet in Europe um, so yeah yeah I just want to add you are talking about him I like what you said the passion and everything but if you say you don't have a team what is the plan? You need a tech guy, you uh, need these guys. Of course. To, to, uh, you, of course. You need to of scale course. and all of stuff. Of course, of course, so of course. So there are plans that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why I'm saying that right. for the moment I'm alone, but the mo the, it's, this is really important to have people around you. And, uh, and the, the plan is to, you know, I, at first, since I'm, I'm just an intermediary, you know, between the, the, furni the, the, the furniture maker and the, and the final client. So, for the moment, I can stay. I can stay alone. But then, of course, create a team and create someone that will be responsible for the sourcing and someone for the communication and everything. So, 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 yeah. This is yeah. How did you do your market research, your marketing analysis? So, is there? You say there's a demand for that, but what is the competition you see? Is it, for example, Airbnb or something like that? Oh. There, there is there is some 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 startups that are that are starting to enter the Parisian market with this concept. Um, I, I don't see Airbnb as a competitor. I would see maybe more about partnering because I would furnish you know I can furnish the 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 the, the, um, the apartments to be you know to be rent. So that would be more in a partnering uh, system but um, but of course this is not a tech a tech project so of course competition can come uh, but that's why I was I was telling about you know developing different range of, of furniture um, and then and then other services that I'm gonna keep for me for the moment but yeah <laughs> okay yeah As a female entrepreneur, do you think it's important that you should know how to code? It's technology. Oh. Um, I, I think it would be really important, but I think I have a lot to do. And, and I think that when you start a company, um, you need to be really focused on, on, on your product, on the service you provide, and, and find people who have the skills that you don't have. So, because you need to, I think, stay focused on, you know, on the commercial uh, uh, thing and to find your clients and your customers and to find partnerships, everything. So if I, I would love to code and I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn because this is really a, a new language now that's the, the, that is the language of the future. But, um, but I think also that, you know, people have different skills and that's that's good like this and that's how you you make a good team um just want to ask beside obviously the students that go in places to leave there are also startups that are looking places to to create their offices is that the market for you as well this is actually yeah this is to to rent some some furniture for for the offices actually this is this is the the net thing the next thing we are thinking about about developing because that's true that now startups share their offices right because at first you don't have that much money and so you don't want to buy and um and and there is not that much furnished places but there is even less furnished offices so uh so thank you <laughs> Next question. Uh, you said that um, don't wait for the best product in order to try. Um, how to build uh, the right audience when you are alone and when you are uh, trying, maybe the audience is not so good and so you have to identify the right people in order to understand if you are doing well or not. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 I understood, thank you. Um, well, I, I think that, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when you create something and that you go to the market, you have at least, you know, an ID for who would be your user. Well, was that your question, to find the, how to find the right audience? 
how to build the audience to uh, understand if uh, your test is good or ah. not. Uh, well, I think you have to, to test it to, to, to your end users, you know, and, and you identify your end users. I think when, you, when you're designing your product, you're, you have to have the idea of who you want to address to, right? Because we all have different needs and, and different, d yeah. So, um, so I think this has to be a first thing to, to know to whom you want to market, of course. This is this is really important, to, and and I don't think you can create something not not knowing who you want to address because then you don't you don't know how to you know how to create this. I don't. Is that that's okay? Yeah, that's answered your okay. Any more questions? No, is that it? Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clemens. That was wonderful.